Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to do three view renderings like this, but in a way that we can make adjustments to our model just one time, and then with just a couple of clicks, render out this composite. So let's jump right into it. So to get started, I'm going to use this model of a Vox guitar amplifier that I made. We're going to want a front, top, and side view on our final image. Right now, there's no good way to do a multicam setup in which you can extract each of the individual renders. So how we're going to do it might seem a little hacky, but it will work. First, we need to add our three cameras. I'll use my existing camera and call it front. Now because these are going to be straight on images, I want to put my camera in orthographic mode. So I'll click on my camera data icon with my camera selected and change the type from perspective to orthographic. The thing with orthographic is, there's no perspective in the image. So if I go into camera mode, the orthographic scale here is actually how many meters across my camera is. So if I were to add a cube that was six units across and centered along with the camera, it would fit perfectly from side to side. That means we can use this information to determine how we want to frame our object. I'll go ahead and zoom in a bit. I'll do that by lowering the orthographic scale. There, that's framed up nicely. So what I'll do is just clean up the location a little bit. I want my X location to be zero, so it's perfectly centered. My Y location is at 2697, so I'm just going to round this off to negative 2700. And then my Z location is at 248.11, I'm just going to round that to 250. Of course I am working in millimeters here, if you're working in meters, you'd want to adjust the decimal places accordingly. Now I'm going to go into top view and duplicate this camera. I'll bring it over to the side, holding down control to snap it to the grid. I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees. So now you'll see that the Y position is at zero, so it's right along my Y axis. My Z is still 250, and my X is now at 2400. You noticed here that my Y was at negative 2700, and this one is at X 2400. So you might think that this camera being closer is going to affect the overall size of this image. But let's take a look. If I go into camera view, and then I change my camera to my second camera, you'll see that the sizes are still the same. Actually, as long as the camera is on this side of the object, I can make my X location of my camera as large as I want, and the size doesn't change. That's because there's no perspective. And when there's no perspective, things don't get smaller as they get further away. Finally, I'll duplicate my camera again, go into side view, and do the same thing, but this time aligning it on the Z axis. Rotating it down, so my X and Y are at zero, and my Z is at this positive 2500. Again, it doesn't really matter how close or far away it is. So just to get them out of the way, I could move this one up, this one back, and this one over. So I've got my front camera, call this one side, and I'll call this one top. Now we need to set up so that they each get their time to render. We're going to do that using an animation. So with my timeline window open, I'm going to go to my front camera. And at frame 1, I'm going to go to Marker, Bind Camera to Marker, which is Control b You'll see down here that a camera marker has been added, pointing to camera front. On frame 2, I'll go to the side camera. And with the side camera activated, and my mouse over the timeline, I'll press Control b so now there's a side camera marker at frame 2. And then at frame 3, I'll activate the top camera and do the same thing with Control b Now if I go from frame to frame, my active camera changes. 
Next, because I only want to do these three views, I'm going to go to my output properties and change the end frame to frame 3. So now I'll only render frames 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to put these in a directory under slash TMP slash amplifier. So this renders more quickly, I'm going to use EV. You can of course use cycles for this as well. So now that I have the location set, I'm going to go ahead and render this animation. The next step is to composite these together. So I'll go up to the scene selection and press new scene. And here I can just select new. Under here, I'll go to compositing and select use nodes. Now for my input images, I don't want these render layers. So I'm going to delete this node. But what I do want is an image sequence. So I'll say input image and I'll click open. Here under my slash temp slash amplifier directory, I see my three images. I'll select all three and say open image. Because the files were labeled sequentially, Blender automatically sees that they're an image sequence with three frames. So if I plug this image into my compositor, shift right click drag along this line and then control shift click on this reroute node I can pull in my first image into my compositor. I'm going to click view here and then click fit. That way my viewer takes up the whole screen. Now I want to put this image in the lower left hand corner of my render. So I'm going to use a distort scale node. Leaving it in relative mode, I want this to be half of normal size. If we take an image and we make it half size, that means we'll actually be able to fit four of them in the same space as one of the original. So now I want to move my amp over to the left. So to do that, I'm going to use a translate node. That's found under distort, translate. I'm going to put it also in relative mode, that way I don't have to mess with absolute sizes. So if I change my render size, it's not going to be a problem. So here I want to move this a quarter of the way to the left. So I'll put in negative 0.25. And I want it to move it down one quarter of the way. So I'll do negative 0.25 on the Y. Now I'm going to duplicate these three nodes and bring them down here. For the moment, I'll plug this one into this reroute node instead of the top one. To choose the next image, I'll simply set the offset to 1. So now it's looking at frame 2. We want the side image to be on the right. The scale is already correct. The Y position is correct. We simply need to move it to the other side on the X. So we, this needs to be at positive 0.25. To combine these, we'll simply add a color alpha over node and add the two images. We'll do this one more time, this time setting the offset to 2, and this time we'll go ahead and add our alpha over in node right away. We want to move it back over here on the X, so that's negative 0.25 and then we want to move it to the positive 0.25 on the Y. Now I can go ahead and render this image. And I have the basic image I was looking for. What's nice about this process is that if I go back to my original scene and make some kind of change, let's say I add a Suzanne. I simply need to re-render my first scene, go to my second scene, and render that image. So you just have to set this up once, and then you can work on your object as much as you like, and whenever you need to render out your three-way render, you can do that with just a couple of clicks. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can set up a simple rig 
so that if we want to move around our cameras, we don't have to manually make corrections to their locations to get them to align. And we can move them around with ease. And change all of their orthographic scales at the same time. So that's it for now. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you find this really helpful, and I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. I want to take a moment to thank all my patrons for their continued support of this channel. I appreciate you all more than you can know. So until next time, this is Johnny, and I'll catch you later.